Hello, and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review broadcast for Sunday, August the 25th, the year 2024. The lesson review is taken from 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, verses 8 through 10, and 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 3, and verses 21 through 23. The title of the lesson is Josiah Calls the People Back to God. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden. I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church located in the Colleen, Fort Cavazos, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas, 76543. You can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. But if you prefer to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. Now, we at Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. Again, I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now, let's pray before beginning our Sunday School lesson. Gracious Father, as always, I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with me as I go through this lesson. I know that the Holy Spirit has given me the lessons, that, that the words that you had said, because the Holy Spirit listens to what you say about, about, about me and all of the people that, that have the Holy Spirit within them. And you deliver what Jesus is thinking or what he wants the people to hear. And uh, we are to follow your directions because these directions that you're giving us come directly from Jesus. Thank you for those that are listening, Lord. I pray that something is said to help us all to understand you better each and every day. And we realize, Lord, that we can never un totally understand all your word because it, our situations change each and every day of our lives. And as it, our lot situations change, so does your word's meaning to us. I thank you for those who are listening, as I said, and continue to go with each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, I ask it all. Amen. So, for my introduction, Josiah calls the people back to God. Now, if we look at the timeline, the historical timeline for the nation of Israel at this time, the nation of Israel, uh, basically the timeline and history of the nation of Israel occurred after the northern kingdom had been defeated by the Assyrians and its people deported to Assyria. Now, Judah was spared from being captive, captives of Assyria because of Hezekiah's plea to God and God sending an angel to destroy a large portion of Sennacherib's army surrounding Jerusalem. If you will remember, the Rabshakeh was sent there by Sennacherib to basically, basically tell the people that there was no sense in them uh, basically not giving in to Assyria because it, it's, it, they had defeated everyone else, and so Judah was not going to be any different. But all other people didn't have Jesus or God on their side, and Hezekiah did at this time. But after Hezekiah's death, most kings that headed Judah were wicked and did not serve the God of their people, including his son, uh, Hezekiah's son. Now, not until Josiah's reign in Judah did the awareness of God's commands to the Jews become a priority for the people. Before then, they had forgotten their God and his services to them. Josiah was eight years old when he ascended to the throne of Judah, and he reigned for 31 years. Unlike the kings that preceded him, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight by following examples of his ancestor, King David. Josiah did the following things to purify Judah and Jerusalem, found in 2 Chronicles the 34th chapter, verses 3 through 6, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it starts off with verse 3, says, During the eight year, year of reign of his reign, while he was still young, Josiah began to seek the God of his ancestor David. Then in the twelfth year, he began to purify Judah and Jerusalem, destroying all the pagan shrines and Asheroth poles 
and the carved images and cast images. He ordered that the altars of Baal be demolished and that the incense altars which stood above them be broken down. He also made sure that Asheroth poles and the carved idols and the cast images were smashed and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the, uh, the bones of the pagan priests on their own altars and, he so, and so he purified Judah and Jerusalem. He did the same thing in the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, even as far as Naphtali and in the regions all around them. He destroyed uh, the pagan altars and the Asherah poles, and he crushed the idols into, into dust. He cut down all the incense altars throughout the land of Israel. Finally, he returned to Jerusalem. Now, in the 18th year of his reign, Josiah purified the land and the temple by appointing Sharpen, Sh uh, the son of Azariah, Az Azaliah, um, Manasseh, who was the governor of Jerusalem, and Joe, son of Joaz, Johaz. Johaz, the original, was a royal historian to repair the temple of the Lord his God. Now money was given to Hilkiah, the high priest, that was collected by the Levites who served as gatekeepers at the temple of God. Now these gifts were donated by the people from Manasseh, Ephraim, and all the remnants of Israel, including Judah, Benjamin, and the people of Jerusalem. Workers involved in the repair of the temple were paid out of these funds. The workers were... Uh, the workers repairing the temple included carpenters, builders who purchased finished stones for the walls and timbers for the rafters and beams. These workers restored what earlier kings of Judah had allowed to, to the temple to fall into ruin and disarray. Previous kings had done that which was not right in the sight of the Lord. They had abandoned the temple altogether. Not only the king, but the priests and the people had all but abandoned God and the temple. Because of this neglect, the temple had not been properly taken care of, and that is why they were having these people uh, basically repair the temple. The temple that Solomon built was in disrepair, in need of repair, and Josiah initiated the restoration of the temple. But unlike other kings, Josiah insisted that the workers involved in the restoration be paid for their services. Now, during the repair of the temple, an interesting thing happened. The book of the law, representing the core written record of God's gracious covenant relationship with his people, Israel, was basically discovered. This is something that should be protected and cared for, much as we take care of to protect a precious document such as our passports or our last will and testament. But these people had ignored these things and had not basically even thought about it. They went about their own business and doing what they felt was best for them. Israel had failed to protect it, protect the covenant that God had given them. Israel had lost the word of God. They could not find it, and they probably were not looking for it until now. Even more shocking and ironic is where it was lost. King Josiah, one of the few righteous kings in Israel's history, had initiated a construction project to rehabilitate rehabilitate a remodel, basically, probably a better word, the house of the Lord, which had fallen into disrepair during the reign of Manasseh, an apostate king. It was during this repair effort that Hilkiah found the word of the Lord hidden in the temple. The high priest Hilkiah found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. The people of Israel did not misplace the book of the law in some cave or have it snatched from them in a battle. Instead, they lost it in the God's house. They could not find it. They hadn't been looking for it. And for years, they hadn't even thought about it. This book of the law of the Lord was presumably one of all, or all of the books of Moses from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And its pres preservation through the reign of the evil rulers like Manasseh and Ammon, Josiah's predecessors, was miraculous in itself. But even more miraculous is the way that Josiah reacted when God's law was read to him. Shaphan, 
The scribe told Josiah that the book of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, that is, were found in the temple, and he began to read it to Josiah. Now bear in mind, Josiah was not aware of the book of the law because he was eight years old when he started, and he had been basically just getting rid of all of the the idol worship of the items in the, in the, in the country itself. So when Josiah heard these words from the book of the law, he tore his clothes and then commanded Hilkiah and others to go to the prophet and inquire the Lord concerning the words of the book read to him. He wanted to know what the Lord had to say, so he went sent these men to the prophet to find out. Now the prophet that they went to was, you might be surprised, a woman named Huldah. And Huldah and Deborah were the principal professed women prophets in the Hebrew Bible. So they went to them, and in Second Chronicles, the 34th chapter, verses 23 through 28, provides the answers to jo Josiah's question about what God had to say about this law and what it ha the people were going to do, how the people will be affected by it. Verse 23 says, Then she answered them, this is the prophet of Huldah, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, tell the men, the man who sent you to me, that is Josiah, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants, all the curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be poured out on this place and not be quenched. But as for king, the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire the Lord in this manner, you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humble yourself before God. When you heard his words against this place and against the inhabitants, and you were humble, and you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your clothes and wept for me. I also have hurt you, says the Lord. Surely I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see the calamities which I will bring on this place and its inhabitants. So they brought back the words to the king. And this brings to a close my introduction to the lesson. Uh, just bear in mind that this is what Josiah, the king, did. And basically bringing the people back to God. And uh, Josiah was spared to basically seeing all these things. Now God had sent his prophets, Jeremiah, as well as Isaiah, telling them all that had happened. But they had not listened. And uh, so now God is saying he's not going to change his mind. They will be punished. But he's saying to Josiah, do not worry. You will be dead and gone by the time all these things happen. And you will not be, you will not see all of the events that occur in this time. So that, my Christian friends, is the end of my introduction. Now let's get in started with our Sunday school lesson. The lesson is titled, Josiah Calls the People Back to God. The lesson text is taken from 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, verses 8 through 10. 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 3, and verses 21 through 23. The golden text is taken from 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter, verse 3, and it reads, And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their hearts and all their souls to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book, and all the people stood to the covenant. The lesson sections, we have three of them. First one is Discovery, 2 Kings uh, 22nd chapter, verses 8 through 10. Determination, 2 Kings the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 3. And devotion, Second Kings, the twenty-third chapter, verses twenty-one through twenty-three. So let's get started with discovery from the twenty-second chapter of Second Kings, verses eight through ten. Verse eight reads, "And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the, the scribe, 
I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Saphon, and he read it. Now, since the temple was not being properly used, it was a convenient place to store all kinds of stuff. Once objects were stored in the temple, it was easy to forget about them if they were not used daily. So because the temple was not used as it should have been used, it was easy for the law of the Lord of Moses, that is, Moses and the law that God gave him to be forgotten. And the, the rulers basically had not followed what God had said that they should do. And Hilkiah gave the book to Saphon, and he read it. And verse 9 says, And Saphon the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, that is the temple, and have delivered it into the hands of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Now, Shaphon describes, Shaphon the scribe, that is, went to Josiah to tell him that the workers in the temple were being paid by those who control the money from the Levites. And verse 10 says, And Shaphon the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me a book, and Shaphon read it before the king. Next, Shaphon, the scribe, showed Josiah the book of the law. He told Josiah that Hilkiah the priest had found the book of the law that gave instructions to Israel on how to serve him inside the temple and throughout the land. Then Shaphon began to read the documents to Josiah. Now, I covered all of the reactions of Josiah when the book, when the book was read to him in the, my introduction, so I won't do that here. But just bear in mind that when he heard this, he was brokenhearted, and basically he wanted to get some answers, and he sent them to the, the priest, the priestess in this case, to get the answer from God, and that was Huldah, and we'll get into that later on. Now... The second, this concludes the first section. Now we get into the second section, the determination. Uh, he has heard about the, the, he's, the basically the restoration, the restoration of the temple has begun, and uh, they discovered the book, the book of the law, the first five books of, uh, that Moses wrote in the Bible from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Now, determination basically is taken from the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 3. And verse 1 says, And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. Now, one must remember that Josiah was a king of Judah, the southern kingdom. And the, and the northern kingdom had already been punished by God when he allowed the Assyrians to defeat them. So Josiah is addressing the inhabitants of Judah about the law found, the new found law. It wasn't the new law, it was the law that God had originally given to Israel before they went into the promised land, but they had forgotten it and lost it for that matter. And verse 2 says, And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. Now, since a larger part of the Pentateuch focused on the Mosaic covenant, these five books came to be called basically the Mosaic covenant. But it's given to Moses by, by God himself. Now, verse 3 says, And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their hearts and their souls to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book. And all the people stood to the covenant. They all agreed to do this. But you know Israel's history. Once the people realize they made a mistake, that generation follows God after that. But it seems like each succeeding generation goes right back to where they were before, serving God, uh, idol gods. And this is the situation here. But God had told uh, Josiah that he would not see when they were taken into captivity because he would be long gone before that happened. Now, since a larger part of the Pentateuch focused on the Mosaic Covenant, the, the five books of the Mosaic Covenant, they came to be called 
the, the, the covenant, the Mosaic covenant. Now, since all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were assembled together by Josiah, it seems best to view this as a reading of the whole written symbol, uh, written law found in Genesis, the first chapter, verse through Deuteronomy, the third, 34th chapter. Josiah made a public binding agreement to completely obey the Lord by doing all that was commanded in the book of the covenant that the people had just heard read to them. Now, following Josiah's example, all the people promised to keep the stipulations of the Mosaic covenant. And again, their hearts were in the right place, but as time went by, succeeding generations did not follow the Lord. And we know the end of that because uh, Nebuchadnezzar came and basically took all of the people from, the, all of the important people anyway, to uh, Babylon. So that concludes that second sec section. Now we get to the third section, and that is devotion. Now, bear in mind, Josiah has read this lesson to him. Josiah has heard the word written to him, uh, heard the word read to him, and he has asked Hilkiah, the high priest, and others to go to the prophet, prophetess Hilda to find out what God is, wants, God's plans for them are. And he said, God has already said that his plan is in full force. He's given them many years, centuries for that matter, to change their mind, and they did not. And so he says he's going to proceed with this plan to deliver the people to their enemies. But he said, Josiah will not see this because he will be dead by the time this, like, these things happen. So in verse 21, it says, The king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. God's people had for years ignored the Passover unto the Lord. God had told Israel to remember the last day they were in Egypt, when he sent the death angel to every household in Egypt to kill every firstborn of humans and animals. But God told Israel to paint the blood of a lamb over their doorpost and the death angel will pass over that household and the firstborn in the house will not die. But all of those that did not, the majority of the Egyptians, did not do that because they didn't have the instructions and so they, their firstborn were died, did. Now, verse 22 says, Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. So this event that uh, Josiah held was basically the one to be remembered because that the one had not been such as happened and the judges basically had happened in all those years from the book of Judges throughout all of that. Samuel was the last judge and um, since that time, uh, they had never had a, such a Passover as, in the, as it had occurred this time. Now, all the evil kings before Josiah had ignored the Passover, an event that God said they should always remember, but they had forgotten it. They forgot it because they wanted to forget it. Verse 23 says, But in the 18th year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem, so Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he probably was not versed in all the things God had said to the Jews the Jews should do, because nobody had been following them, and nobody basically would be saying the high priest hadn't been following them. And now at the age of eight years old, he had not been introduced to the Passover, nor had he witnessed the keeping of any of God's laws, because the leaders before him had not kept them, and the priests and the people had not kept them either. Now, bear in mind that at eight years old, he probably had advisors to guide him in matters related to God. But at his age then, nobody was following the law because it was lost and they knew nothing about it. So advisors could not give Josiah needed instructions on how to relate to God's commands. Now, the book of the law could not be found during the reign of the evil kings. And even in the temple, the high priest was not aware of the book either didn't know where it was. He didn't find it until they started renovating the temple. Now, once the books were discovered and read to him, Josiah made it his business uh, to command the people to keep the law. And this, my Christian friends, is the essence of the Sunday school lesson as I see it. 
Josiah basically came and he basically called the people back to God and they followed him for a time. Now let us close with prayer in the Sunday school lesson. Lord Jesus, thank you for going with me through this lesson. Lord, I know that it's a lesson that we sometimes, it has joy and it has sadness because we know that the joy that they experience would not be repeated throughout forever throughout their life because they would go back to the evil ways as generation passed. But Lord, you told Josiah that he would not see this. He would, be, he, would, he would live in peace and not see all of the evil things that would happen. And Lord, as we go through life, help us to do the things that you would have us to do because we know that there's a day coming when you will come back and you will receive those that have accepted you. And Lord, help us to be ready when we come and help us to help others to understand you and accept you as the Lord and Savior because that is the only way that they will be saved from the destruction that is to come. When the Jesus comes and after Jesus takes his people out of this earth, off this earth and back to him with heaven, then all destruction types come to come back because then we go into the great tribulation. And that seven years, and the word says, if those seven years had not been shortened, there would be no flesh left on earth. But we know that you, you have your plan and we thank you for that, Lord. Bless those that are listening, if it be thy will, continue to go with us and help us to understand you and your ways each and every week. This is my prayer, and I ask it in Jesus' name.